fill you guys in in case those of you missed it. I was feeling guilty that I've taken marriage off the table with Steve because maybe he wants to get married. He just doesn't want to say it because as you know, my whole trauma of marriage, I don't want to do it again. So I had built this thing up in my mind. That's for sure why he's acting weird. He's a little standoffish. It must be because he wants to get married and I don't. So as soon as the podcast was over last week, I walked on over. He like got in a little bit later and I walked right up to him and I said, do you want to get married and you're just not saying anything? And he goes, what? And I go, I feel like you're acting weird. And there's been a few days of, you know, certain behavior that's not like you. And I just feel like maybe it's because you want to get married and you had said something to me along the lines of, I only get to call you my girlfriend. I never get to call you my wife. So I took that as maybe you've got some animosity uh, brewing as Aaron drinks her coffee that you want to get married and you just don't want to say it. So here's your opportunity. Do you want to get married? He goes, no. I go, well, great. Then that solves that discussion. And he goes, well, I don't know why you'd think that. I said, well, I don't know. I just, you know, I was picking up on things. And he goes, no, you made it clear you don't want to get married. So I'm good with that. He was like, I don't necessarily love just calling you my girlfriend. It feels like kind of juvenile and like not like it I can encom- see that. encompasses like how strong we are. He's like, I said, well, you can call me your wife if you want to. We're just not going to get married. And he was like, no, I know. And I'm good with that. That's something you've been very forthright and upfront about from the beginning of our relationship. So I'm fine with that. But I just, I was like, all right, so we need to come up with a new word. I'm not just partner? a girlfriend. I hate partner. It okay. feels like my business partner or like something that's like transactional. Okay. So I'm t- let's take it to the streets. To the streets. What, you guys, what could Steve and I call? Like we have nicknames already for each other. Like when we're on the ranch, it's Tommy and Linda. Or when I'm acting up and had too much wine, he calls me Londa. You know, <laughs> Londa, Londa, Londa gets sloppy. He goes, oh, here's Londa again on the sauce. So like nicknames are one thing, but like what's something that holds more weight than just girlfriend? Mm. Or boyfriend. So I, would I get love your that. Guys but I call yeah. you guys like I do. I say, you know, your husband or your wife or whatever. I'm not sure. But that's an interesting thing. Yeah. So that's what's happening. But it induced um, some dialogue about because I'm I get this from my father, who as a, as a family, he would always have family like chats and sort of like discussions on things when because they were everyone was going different directions. And it was really important for him to have family meetings. We didn't have it like every week or anything, but we definitely had it regularly. Whereas a kid, I remember this where my dad would sit us all in the living room and he'd go over things like, all right, you guys need to do a better job of this, or you're doing a great job at this, or this is what your mom needs help with. This is what I need help with and sort of just sort of recalibrate the household. So I, on the heels of my weird feeling about Steve, I was like, why don't we do something called the state of the union? for our relationship, but we'll do it twice a year. And we make a list of all the things that you don't like about me. Now, I'm sure there's not a lot, right? I'm sure there's just like a few things (laughs) that he's not thrilled about um, that I do. So if he makes a list of things that I need to work on, and then he makes a list of things he thinks he can do a better job of. But for example, like he volunteered to mulch the front of the yard area like in all of these things because you know you got to do that right when you re you know re lay down the the bark and all that stuff give fresh flower beds he did half the yard but then ran out of mulch well he ran out of mulch three months ago so now the other half the yard has been sitting there for three months and every time i ask him about the mulch he goes oh the store is out of it i go no it's not you just haven't finished it so my state of the union point which i'm going to be bringing up at our meeting next month is finishing projects you start. So things like that, right? Because I'm sure there's things that I do around the house that he's like, what the fuck? But Steve's so not confrontational that he won't say anything. And one day it's going to blow up like a fountain. And I'm not interested in seeing that. So slowly diffusing things so then everything can be copacetic. Do you you worry, though, that having a state of the union twice a year is a little too far apart and each time you have it, because there's been so much time that's passed, there's a lot of critiques, criticism. This is good. Fine. We're going to do it quarterly. Revision of state of the union. We're doing it quarterly. Every three months. Every three months, buddy. Yeah. No, it's a great point. 
In fact, I'll take it to month? the month. Check in. Well, guess what? Me, you, Steve, and Jared are going to go on a trip very soon together. So guess what this conversation, we're going to take this conversation right here straight to the dinner table one night. <laughs>